Thing. So, uh, and I think yesterday uh, we have seen about composition. Yeah. yeah. And initially, yes, we just uh, completed the inheritance part and that cuboid class. Okay. And where it was using inheritance, right? So, cuboid as a case of inheritance and where it was inheriting the instance variables, methods. Okay. Fine. Uh, any constructors you will always have to specify in a subclass. Okay. Or else, if you don't specify, what will it be? Fine. Using super without any parameter, right? A no argument constructor will be there available for you. Okay. Using as an object without superclass. Using as an object. Using as a, okay. Like, okay. If you don't specify a superclass, yes. Object becomes a superclass. Uh, okay. And then, uh, so yeah, we also saw about method binding, right? which happens. So, which method will be invoked is not decided by the type of the variable. And when we use a particular variable and a method, right? Which method will be invoked is dependent on the object. And so it is decided at runtime. Okay. So we say method binding for methods. Okay. Method binding is done at runtime. Okay. And then for variable binding, when we saw the concept of a shadow variable, right? Okay. When superclass has a variable, instance variable, same name, another instance variable may be having, uh, you may have in a subclass, and we call it as a shadow variable. Okay. So variable shadowing may be done. But in such case, again, the variable binding is done with based on the type that is at compile time. Okay, so variable binding at compile time, whereas method binding is done at runtime. Okay. Fine. And instance of operator. Okay, oh, we use the instance of pattern matching, right? We said pattern matching using instance of, right? So yeah, uh, because we were in, uh, using lot of tasking operations between superclass and subclass. And cuboid rectangle, okay. Yeah, we, we were having some rectangle object. Uh, type, uh, the variable was a rectangle type, but it was having the object of cuboid, right? So we were, we were trying to use cast in order to use anything which is specific to the cuboid, okay. So, yes, if you want to have casting to be done, fine, a safe casting would be to do a check whether actually it is an object of the specified type or not. Okay. And for that, yes, uh, we have seen that we have an operator called instance of, fine. So we were using instance of and then within the, uh, so we would have an if statement and within the if statement you would have instance of, right. Okay. When you would do a casting and right? within the <coughs> block of the if you would do a casting, right? So you may declare a local variable for casting by doing a cast and then use it. So in such cases, uh, we have a new uh, uh, we have a new feature by which we call it as pattern matching, basically. So when we say pattern matching, yes, it's like when we use the instance of, we'll declare a variable for the a local variable for the specified type. For which we are checking. So we'll say, okay, oh, it's a, uh, so uh, <coughs> some variable or some expression, instance of, and then you have to specify a reference type, okay. Also specify a variable, and you can follow it with specifying the local variable. So it's like it's doing a cast for you and making it available in the variable, okay. And that casting will be done conditionally, like only if it is instance of the type. So it's, that local variable is only, the scope for the local variable is only within the if state, fine, if condition, okay. That if block if you are having, okay. And so that we had seen last day yesterday, right, okay. And then we saw about composition, when defining a, a cuboid as a composition. So a cuboid has a Rectangle, right? When we were using inheritance, we said, oh, let's extend from 
rectangle cubed defined by using extension from rectangle. So at that time, yes, what we were doing here, we were, we were thinking of it as being a is a relation, right? Is a, is a not a correct relation for in case of cuboid and rectangle. So cuboid is not a rectangle, right? And therefore, we should not have gone for inheritance. Okay, the relationship is a has a relation, and therefore we have composition, and we would go for composition in such a case. Okay, fine. So uh, yeah, fine. So we again redefine the cuboid class, fine, where it was using rectangle as a instance variable. Right. Okay, and then uh, yeah, and then yes, a few comparison of inheritance of composition, which would be preferred. We would prefer composition unless we find there is strict, strictly a is a relation, right? Unless we find is a relation, and we should be going for composition, right? Okay. And uh, yeah, the advantage with composition, what's the advantage? Methods, yeah, you get full control on the methods, okay, what methods, it's your decision, right, fine, okay, okay, yeah, and then we said, oh, let's have both the versions of cuboid. Yeah, we wanted to have both the versions of cuboids. So, what did we do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, have a, we would like to have a prefix. So, that is to make them unique. The name should become unique, right? So, there must be a prefix, fine. And to have a prefix for the types you define in a Java file. So Java file is used for defining a type sign right? that we know. Okay. So for the types which you are defining in a particular Java file, okay, you can declare a prefix. Okay, you want to have a particular prefix, okay, and that is what is specified <coughs> with the help of a packet statement. So we have a packet declaration statement. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, Okay, unlike the name of a class, when we define say class and followed by a class name, right? That class name would have only single identifier. Okay, fine. Whereas a packet name may have multiple identifiers separated by a dot. Okay. Fine. So fine. that's something which we can do. Yeah. Okay, let's just check. Uh, let's open the file. Now what I had to do yesterday was uh, uh, I think we didn't save it at that time, right? Qbert.java. We had saved. We have our own original Qbert.java which was using inheritance. And this is the one which uses inheritance. Okay. And we had used a prefix, right? We had declared a packet. Okay. Then this was done. Uh, we had defined the other file, but uh, uh, just I think in a hurry, we didn't save it. Anyway, I saved it later, <laughs> but yeah, okay. So what I did was, uh, uh, so how would I have saved it? I can't have it in the same place. So created a new folder, fine, and then saved it in that place, okay. So what I have done is I have put it in a folder uh, called uh, in SRC, right? all source code is in SRC, under that I just created a CUMPO folder and put the keyboard.java. See, this has no relation with the packet declaration which we have. Okay, there is no such relation. Okay, anyway, if you try compiling keyboard, you will be getting errors, okay, for a reason and which is different from saying oh, it's not because of the packet declaration alone there are other things fine right? there is something called access specifiers access modifiers which you may use with the various things which you are defining 
See, what are we defining so far? What are the things you define? You define types. <coughs> Fine. Okay. Types are your classes, interfaces, enums, annotation, record. Okay. So you define them. So as soon as you say, I have a class called Hello World. Fine. A data type called Hello World becomes available. Okay. By using a packet declaration, what are we doing? By having a packet declaration, what do we do? We only give the prefix to the name. Okay, if you don't have a packet declaration, then what? No, we were not having packet declaration. So what was it? Every type which you have belongs to some or the other package. Okay, even if you don't declare a package, there is actually a package called the unnamed package. Okay, we have a package called unnamed package. So when we don't make a packet declaration, they all go in a common package called the unnamed package. Okay. Fine. Uh, I don't know if you recollect when we had generated the documentation, we did Java doc, right? On second or third day, we did that, right? So at that time, the <laughs> documentation which was generated was mentioning about the unnamed package. Okay, it was saying, oh, in, we have an unnamed package in which all of these have been created. Okay, fine. So everything belongs to some or the other. And so package is always there for everything, right? Okay. So we have five kinds of members for a package. Package has five kinds of members. Okay. Uh, let's see this now. Uh, anyway, uh, before we move forward, any questions so far? Any questions up till now? Yeah? Sir, yeah. Sir. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sir, if we declare a new different package is different uh, prefix, is yeah. 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 File. yeah, yeah. Why do we require the post have the keyboard file in the different folder? Because we already. Ah. Otherwise, we'll be overwriting that same file. We are having a physical file by a name cuboid.java in a particular folder that was SRC folder. And I wanted to save the file name, other, yeah, of course, I could have given a different file name. Okay, maybe you want that? Yes, you can do that also. Let's change the file name instead of putting it in a separate folder. Okay, fine, and let's see. Okay. We can do that also. That's that's not a problem. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, maybe we can change it. So this one, the second, this cuboid.java, right, which is using composition. I have saved it in a folder called compo. Okay. Let me do a save as and. Remove the earlier one, okay? Let's put it in a, uh, okay? So in the same place, okay? And giving a different name, okay? So what do we want to call it? You word composition. Okay. You word composition dot Java, okay? Uh, or you want to call it cuboid1, cuboid2, you, yeah. can, you can do that also. Okay, so cuboid1.java. See, our class is not public. It's fine to have a file name not matching the class name. Okay. And we are not making our class public. Okay. Fine. 
it. Oh, okay, and oh, we wanted to have it removed. We don't want the folder for compost. Okay, so in the SRC, we don't want the folder for compost. So let's go. And do that. Okay. So go to the And we have the compo folder. We have keyboard one dot Java, right? Okay, so so we'll be having so we can just And so that's gone. Then so we uh, fine. Okay, so we have two classes. Of course, they will have to be in a separate Java file. Fine. So one Java file has the cuboid class using inheritance. The other one we have called it as cuboid one dot Java, and that's having the one which is using composition. Okay. Fine. Okay. So now uh, we were talking about the package thing, right? So let's go back to that package thing, and then we'll, yes, we'll of course have to do some ten other things. We'll see what is required to be done. Okay. So now, uh, see, it's something like this. Oh, we have a package, right? We have some kind of a package. Okay. So we have a package and so that's some kind of a package oh you can have multiple package right so here yeah, we may have another package okay. okay this is the one which uses inheritance there's a package for that there's a one which is using composition a separate package and there's that unnamed package also yeah we have things which are not part of any package we didn't make a packet declaration, right? Okay, fine. So now uh, we understand that as mem, what are the members which go in a package? So in this, in a package, you may have a class, interface, enum, annotation, or a record. They are types. Okay, fine. They are all types. Okay. So when I'm saying, oh, I want to have a class called cuboid in a particular package, yes, I have a type whose name is having that prefix, okay, and there is a dot cuboid, something dot cuboid, okay, whatever the package name you have de decided, okay, so that's just a type, okay, fine. Now, where can this type be used? Who can use this type? So I'm talking about access specifiers now. Okay, we are now looking at access specifiers. See, we, we never used so far, we have never said oh, we have a public class. Okay, no, none of our types was public. Right? For members of a package, <coughs> remember, I'm talking about members of a package what are members of package they are only types okay for members of a package we have only two kinds of access specifiers what are the two access specifiers one is the default when you don't specify anything okay that's different from saying something about it Okay, so they have used, okay, if you don't use anything, oh, that also has its own meaning. Right? It's not by default, it will become public or it will become private or any such thing. So in Java, for access specifier, default has a separate meaning. Okay, fine. So for members of a package, we have only two access specifiers. Either it can be 
public fine member of a package can either be public or it can be private default not mentioned it's not private okay it's not saying private not saying anything don't mention access specifier that's our default access specifier okay fine it has its own meaning okay so yes uh, so what do you think happens if I declare a type a class to be public? What does it mean? Yeah, it is usable outside the package also. When you have defined the class called cuboid as part of a package, okay, uh, the package is geometry dot shapes. Let's say, so we have a cuboid class or even the rectangle class, okay. So we have this geometry dot shapes, okay. So here is, let's say, geometry dot shapes. That's a package, right. Member of that, oh, there's a member called rectangle, okay. So what does it mean? Geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. Fine. The name actually is geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. That's the name of a type. Where is this geometry dot shapes dot rectangle available? Currently, what do you think? What is the scope? Default. It is default. Therefore, it should be available only within the package. Not available outside the package. So if someone writes a code here, maybe there is some other class in this other package and he says, well, I'm interested in using geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. No, it's not available to you because you are not part of the same package. Okay, so it's about the types. Members of a package are types. Okay, so this type, someone wants to declare a variable of type geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. Oh, you are outside the package geometry dot shapes, you cannot be using it. The type itself is unavailable. Fine. Okay, fine. So we know one kind of things. Okay, we have the types which are member of a package. And they can either be available as part uh, to only within the package by making them default or they are available to all by making them public. There is no other option for members of a package and I am using the word members of a package. Okay, because yes, I am not saying class. Why? Because class are not only members of a package, they can again be members of another class. We haven't studied about it, okay, but we know we have nested types also. You can have a class definition as part of some other class definition, but it's still a type. Class is a type. Fine. Class, uh, uh, when I am saying class here, uh, I am just giving example of a class. It is those five types. Okay. So they may be appearing as member of some class. So if it is member of a class, no, we are not talking about that oh, only two access specifier for a class. Okay. We are not saying only two access specifier all classes. It is for members of package. Right. And then we had seen about what are the members which go in a class definition. What are the members? In a class definition now. So here is a class rectangle. What kind of members do we have in the rectangle class? We have got instance variables and the class variables. So those two are the variable types. Okay. Variables. And maybe static and non-static. Okay. Then methods again static and non static constructors right okay fine what else was there we had the class initializer block 
But can anyone be using the class initializer here? There's no need of someone to use the class initializer block. It's used only by the class loader, Java class loader. So there's no question of a access specifier for such an item. Initializer block also were there, right? But there's no question of having a access specifier for the initializer block because they become part of a constructor. So you have got access specifiers for the members of a class. Which members? Variables, right? Methods, constructors, and there can be the nested types. Okay. And at this moment, we are not going into the nested types, but whatever we are talking about access specifier, they apply to members of a class. Right? They will apply to members of a class, all members of a class. So, we are not looking at the local variables or the parameter variables. They don't apply there. They apply to the members of a class. Access specifies apply to member of a package, member of a class, member of an interface. Yes, everywhere access specified. But we are talking about those members. Okay. Okay. So, coming to members of a class, yes, we have the variables, methods, constructors and Subtypes, uh, nested types. Okay, so for them, for members of a class, there are four access specifiers, and we have got four access specifiers for members of a class. Okay, which are those four? So a member of a class may be, and we can start with the narrowest thing, most narrow. Okay, so the narrowest access specifier is the private and it can be private and second one is the blank default. Okay, so the, we have been using the default all the time. We were not uh, fine. We are not aware about the access specifier so far, right? So now let's look at all of them, right? So one is private. Second one is default. The third one is protected, and then comes the public. Okay. So that way there are four access specifiers. Okay, so they will be applicable to members of a class. So any member of a class may be declared to be either of these kinds. Normally, private is used for the variables. Okay, private is used for variables. Sometimes you may have a variable to be public also. Okay, so what is the meaning of private. What is the scope for private? Scope for default was package, right? Public was, okay, usable everywhere, fine. Scope is full, but with default for member of a package we saw, it was restricted to package level. What is, what do you think should be the private one? Fine. The class level. Okay. So, okay. So it's something like this. Okay. So member of a class. Okay. Uh, so if I have declared some variable or any kind of member of a particular class to be private, then it is not available to any other class. Okay. It's not going to be available to any class okay fine or it's not available outside that class rather i should say 
and I am not saying oh it is not available to any other class, it is available to some classes which may be the nested ones. Within this, you know, within the class itself, you have another class, right? So uh, th that one will be able to see it. Okay, it's the scope is the so anything private in a class will be available only within the class. It's usable directly only within the class. Outside the class not available okay we have written the class called rectangle right and then we have written a class called test rectangle in test rectangle we have been we have created object like a rectangle r1 is equal to new rectangle and then we said r1 dot length let me see the value of r1 dot length suppose length was declared as private then that's a separate class. It's a class called test rectangle, right? So test rectangle cannot be using length, which is a private variable. If you declare it private, okay? We haven't done that, but yes, that's normally what is to be done. Normally, your variable should be private because the test rectangle may do something like, oh, let me uh, set r1 dot length is equal to minus five. Oh, we don't want to allow someone to just set up any kind of a value anywhere, right? Okay. You will have to set it through the set dimensions method and in the set dimensions method, I might keep that check. When your updation to the state of the object should be through methods. No one should be directly changing the variables. Okay. Fine. So your code is your your class. The class is your code, right? Others are using it. Okay. Fine. So you don't want someone else to modify your variables. And normally you would have methods through which, if at all, you would like to allow the state to be changed. Okay. That change can be through, only through methods which you provide. So you control. You have control on how a particular variable can be getting modified, okay. And so find clear meaning of private, okay. I will explain one more uh, meaning about the private thing itself, right. Uh, but this touches on the nested types, okay. So maybe within this class itself, and within some class, we have a, okay, I will put it here, so I have a bigger thing here, okay. So we have a class over here in the second package, okay, and that in turn, it has some variables which may be private, then it in turn has another class definition, okay, and this one also has some variables which are private okay let me say i have a class a and a nested class whose name is b so it becomes a dot b basically because it's a member of a that class is called a dot b okay a private member of a is available is accessible for within B, okay. it is available within the class, when private member of A is available within the class A, okay. Now, what about the private member of B? And you think it's not going to be accessible it's accessible within b that's one thing okay you think it's not accessible in a it is accessible in a the private applies to the member of the package b is member of a what is b 
इट्स मेंबर ऑफ ए ए इज द मेंबर ऑफ द पैकेज सो वेन वी आर लुकिंग एट प्राइवेट everything which is private in a is available in a b which is declared as private is part of a itself okay so from accessibility point of view yes this is going to be accessible so if for example in the class a someone creates an object of b and then tries to access the variable which is declared in b on that object it will be available even if it is private but you create object of a class you may have created object of a first but see the existence that is one thing the variables of b instance variables of b will exist only if you have created an object of b okay so if someone has created object of a dot b right suppose that the creation is happening with as part of the class a somewhere over here right okay so it can create object of b and then say let me access that variable okay fine but you need first the object to be created okay so always think in that manner if there is a instance variable you need it is always part of an object so access requires that you must first have a object okay if you have object that thing exists and if it is there it's part of a it's considered as part of a it's private to a so private is with respect to the member of the package right the private is not with respect to i'm saying oh it's accessible only within the class it's not with respect to the nested type it is with respect to the member of the package the nested type is not member of the package it's member of the some other class some other type okay so private is private to member of package okay fine clear private is accessible only within the class okay then what's the next access specifier default okay so what was default in case of type what was the scope package if a member is declared as default okay let's say here in the rectangle we have some oh, we, everything is default for us now so where is it available it's available within the package when throughout package anyone will be able to use it outside the package it's not going to be usable when it's not going to be usable okay not available outside the package for use fine even if it's a subclass okay remember this even if it's a subclass yes it's not available okay so you got some variable over here which is declared as default maybe i have created oh we have that uh, geometry dot shapes as a package where we have a class called rectangle and then we have a geometry dot shapes dot inheritance as the second package where we may have a class called cuboid which is extending from the rectangle class right okay it's extend from here you have variables which you have declared as private what do you think is the private thing available here no it is default what do you think is it available here no okay fine so private we understand not available outside the uh, class itself anyway but if it is default it's not available outside the package within package anyone will be able to use it 
fine within the package any any other class or any any code which is part of that package will be able to use it okay right clear default meaning is package level what about protected what's the meaning of protected What's our understanding about protected? If you have any previous understanding about protected, protected means it is yeah. okay. So if you declare something pro to be protected, it is having the package level access. Oh, same as the default, right? Okay, so that's one thing. It is like a default with slight additional things okay there's only slight change it says okay like default within package anyone should be able to use the protected member okay so there is some other class here not related to this a member declared as protected in rectangle okay will be available in that package to anyone that was the case with default also Okay, this is what was default. Additionally, if you got a subclass, right, if you got a subclass, which may be as part of a different package, fine. So, we have another class which is a, which is part of a different package. So, we, oh, we created a cuboid class, right, right, in our case, we have done this. So, if you have this cuboid class which is extending from rectangle, but this cuboid is not in the same package, then what will happen? A member declared as protected, yeah, is it accessible? Is it accessible? Right? Now, here many of the texts have written mentioned this in a very loose language, in a loose manner, okay, they would try to imply that it is accessible. The variable is not accessible outside the package. A protected member is not accessible outside the package, but it is getting inherited. What is inherited is available in that form. It is available in the inherited form. Uh, my, I'll, I'll drive the point here and I'll give the example exactly. Fine. What is not accessible here? What is meant by not accessible? Suppose this class which is outside the package, it is a subclass, but it is creating. So when it is a subclass and suppose I have a variable x over here which is a protected variable. I don't have to declare x again in the cuboid class. It is getting inherited for me. Okay, so within the cuboid class, I will be able to use x on the object of cuboid. On the object of cuboid. Suppose I create an object of the rectangle class within cuboid. I am having the object of, someone say, okay, you are writing a main method, some method here and you are saying, oh, let me have an object of the rectangle class available over here. So, there is some rectangle R1 which is done and he says R1 dot X. No, it is not accessible on rectangle. It is accessible on cuboid but not on the rectangle because you are not in the same package. It inherits, x gets inherited, cuboid inherits x, within cuboid I will be able to use x. I can say this dot x, I can say even super dot x because then it is on the object of cuboid. 
okay not i'm not able to access it on the object of rectangle it's not accessible on rectangle it's accessible because of inheritance what you have inherited is accessible It's not accessible on the place where it is declared as default, as protected. Okay, so protected is inherited. The in, so it is available on the type which has inherited it. It's available on cuboid type. In cuboid, it will be available on cuboid type, but not on the super type. It's not available on the rectangle type. Fine, clear on this. And meaning of protector, fine. So, because this has been misinterpreted in many places. Fine, so many texts, they are not clarifying this aspect. Fine, so important to remember this. Fine. Okay, next. What is next? Which is the next access specifier? Public. Okay, so what do you think about public? accessible anywhere yeah <laughs> that was the case till java 9 before java 9 okay fine so public is not at, is it, uh, remaining public any longer from java 9 onwards you declare public yes it is available outside the package it is becoming available outside the package. Java 9 introduced a new concept. They introduced what we call as modules. They introduced the, and so they added a concept of module. Okay, so what is a module? I, I, it's just to understand, right? Just a brief understanding about, uh, some idea about what is modularity about. Okay, so we can find, so we'll have to have a different picture altogether now. Okay, so what we have is multiple packages can be grouped into a module. Okay, so, and so you may have, you know, you create package, you define so many packages, right? We understand we have packages and members of package are all of those five things. Okay, but we have a module. So maybe if you consider this as a module, okay, this is some module we have. Okay, right. So that's a module one, let's say. And similarly, you may have a module two also. Okay, fine. We have a module definition that is module info.java specific file name to be used in order to define your modules. You define a module by using a specific file. See, I said in Java you can only have five things, right? So what they have done is okay, when we introduce a module, we said okay, we use a specific file name and the name would be module info.java only this kind of a file by this specific name can be used to declare modules to define modules rather okay. <coughs> fine now each module fine is having as members what are the members of a module packages okay so you got one package which in turn has class and everything types Okay, you got another package. So these are packages. Packages are the members of a module. Okay, so when we define a module, it's like there is a module, give a module name, and then we say oh, we don't have to say anything. When you the the actually there is a directory structuring which is used in this case, and which will decide what are all the members of a which are the member packages. Okay, now in a module info, what you will be declaring is that, okay, 
I use other modules. They are saying, okay, I require to be using other modules. I am dependent on, I am using, I want to use classes from another module. Okay, so I want to use things from, uh, okay, let's consider module 2 is being defined, right? So when module 2 is being defined, it is saying, I am using module 1. I need module, I, I require, okay, I require. module 1 okay i'll say i require module 1 then it's a require and so module 2 says oh i require module 1 okay but what module 1 has done oh it has so many packages but then it says okay it says oh i export and I'll say, I, I export only so and so packages. So, a module definition decides which packages will be available when someone is dependent on this module. Not all packages become available outside the module. So, public member of a package, okay, a public member of a package is available outside the module only if the module has decided to export it. Okay, so from that point of view, okay, a public is not public means, oh, it's not available to all. Public is available to within the module. Outside the module also, in case it is part of the package, which is being exported by the module. So modules export packages, but module use modules. Okay, so module says, oh, I'm, I, I want to be using, I depend on a particular module. When it says, I depend on the module, what will be available are the packages which have been exported by that module. So to module two, okay, which says I require module one, from module 1, only the exported packages are available. Not everything of module 1 becomes available. Okay. So, modules have their own privacy. Okay. Find something which will not be available outside the module. Okay. And their entire package is basically. Anyway, so uh, from that point of view, yes, the meaning of public is, it's not really fully public now. Okay. But yes, if you are just looking at the modules within a module itself, oh, it's public is available throughout the module and available outside the module in case it has been exported, in, the, in case it's part of a package which has been exported. Okay, so access specifiers should be clear. And the four access specifiers for members of a class. And, and two access specifiers for members of a package. Right? Okay, now. If you go back and try compiling the things, let's see what will happen. The kind of messages which you will get. Subne. Module 1 ka definition depends on. Module 1 bolta hai says package 1 there are. So module 1 decides that it decides to export. So it is part of the definition of module 1, which will decide. If someone says, see, anyone who wants can always say, I will require so and so module. There's no restriction. You can mention any module because you want to use classes which are part of the packages available in a particular module. 
मॉड्यूल टू को मॉड्यूल वन का कुछ दिखेगा नहीं एक्सेप्ट फॉर वट एवर इज एक्सपोर्टेड कंपाइलर है ना बैठा है ना एरर देने के लिए अच्छा मॉड्यूल वन का डेफिनेशन है मॉड्यूल वन है उसने लिस्ट दिया एक्सपोर्ट पैकेज दिस एक्सपोर्ट दिस पैकेज एक्सपोर्ट दिस पैकेज मॉड्यूल टू जब बोलता है रिक्वायर मॉड्यूल वन तो उसको कौन सा पैकेज दिखने वाला है जो वो लिस्ट में है एक्सपोर्ट के उसके अलावा नहीं मालूम है उसको you it's about using them right so you will not be able to use them mera nahi isko kya dekhega module 2 ko usne bola i am dependent on module 1 see i'll tell you why this modularity came kyun aaya modularity why this modularity has come why do we have this modularity java became very large in terms of its library the library was so huge now you write a program which is required which does not require database but the file you know wherever you are installing right the in, that so it had a huge library file single library file which was very huge We, it was called as rt dot jar runtime rt for runtime at runtime all of these classes are available i don't know what someone will be using this is the entire library for java so many things and every new version so many new classes and everything was getting added so it was a huge thing right okay size was also huge and when someone says oh i want to use a particular class okay fine from a package Oh, it's available, right? Everything was available. Okay, so one thing was a uh, lot of things. It one thing it requires a lot of space. Okay, so this was one of the task which was taken. Since we have devices which may have limited space. Okay, and also you know if you have a large number of classes, and someone says, "Oh, I want to load that class." it will have to search in a bigger space <coughs> right time consuming okay so cutting the time of loading also fine as well as oh if it's uh, i am writing an application which does not need that i want to distribute the application to someone fine i can say okay uh, let me have a java let me have a smaller footprint of java which only uses so and so modules so there is one uh, so basically this modularity was for the java library breaking breaking it into smaller parts but keeping in mind that yes if you take a particular part it depends on some other modules we have one of the modules called java.base when right? where oh, so in java.base yes they have internal dependencies they have right and java.base module has been created keeping in mind that yes this is the minimum things which everyone will need if you use anything in java yes this is the minimum things you will be required okay and then yes or you don't may not be using database related things okay we have a module where the database related things are separated out okay if you are distributing your application to someone why do you want to distribute the entire big thing okay it has to be deployed in a smaller device <coughs> right it shouldn't be occupying too much of space it was very huge thing rt.jar so they have done this job of breaking it into 
modules. Okay, it took a lot of time to break it into modules, keeping in mind the dependencies among them. Some package here depends on another package here, or oh, they were using it all over the places. So things had to be getting organized. Okay, because dependencies have to be properly managed in this case. It's about managing the dependency of one class. And some class in a particular package was dependent on some other class in which all packages. So you depend on so many other classes, right? You define a class and you are, you, see, you are defining a class called hello world, but you are dependent on, don't we use other classes within hello world? Oh, we depend on system class. We depend on the string class. Okay, the system class, we don't know what all it is using. Oh, it is using so many other classes in the definition of system. In the definition of string, oh, it is again using so many other classes. Right? So that dependencies have to be kept in mind. Right? Okay, so fine. So this was just to uh, highlight the point that yes, public has no longer remained public. Okay. Public means part of the available throughout the module. And anyway, as a developer, uh, you normally will not be creating multiple modules. When you define an application for a single application, yes, you may not have multiple modules. Breaking into modules, yes, we don't normally do. It is mainly meant for because we use, we are dependent on the Java library where there are modules. Okay, they have broken it into modules because it's really huge. Right? You may be using some other framework which has got so many packages that they have again decided to put it into modules. Then yes, you should be aware of what modules you will be using. Okay. When clear? Okay. Fine. So, coming back to the uh, access specifiers. Yeah, any questions now on access specifiers? Two access specifiers for member of package and four access specifier members of a class. Yeah, we haven't yet seen into interface types. So, when I'm saying class, yes, it's about the class types. When, so, members of a class type. Class types are classes, enums and records. So, class, enum or record, they have got, members of those will have four access specifiers. Okay. Declaring a variable private means, we normally declare variables to be private. It would be applicable to, if someone tries, Something like r1 dot length, right? Okay, do we want to allow that outside the class or not? Okay, fine. Uh, met, see, uh, what about access specified to a, a constructor? Methods also we understand, but access specified to a constructor? See, each one has its own access specifier. I would like you to use the type, but I don't want you to be able to create the object by using new, I'll make the constructor private. Here the meaning is, you can use this, you can use the class, you may, if you have the object of such a class, you will be able to invoke a method, you will be allowed to write a method which uses a parameter of the type rectangle. But no, creating a rectangle, I don't want you to be allowed for that, right? Maybe outside the package, I don't want you to create a Rectangle. Okay. Clear accessibility to various members. Each member has a purpose. We have seen that purpose. Okay. So constructor has a purpose of allowing creation or not. So fine. Each thing is independent, right? Okay. So you are declaring a variable to be private because you don't want the access to the variable. But one thing. If the type is not available, then the members within the type have no meaning. You may have something declared as public, 
but the class is default. The class is default. The member of the class is public. Does it make sense? Does it remain public? The type is not available. How can the member of the type be usable? You are saying, oh, it's <coughs> public. But yes, it will still not be usable because the type is not usable. Okay, class is not public. Class is only default outside the packet. A public method of that class. Oh, we are not even knowing that class outside the package. Okay, and so such things, yes, you will have to and use the common sense there and be able to understand that part. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, so let's see uh, the code which we have got. Yeah, so now what do you think here? Uh, can we go for public classes at this moment? Okay, let's try with the minimum thing which will have to be public. Yeah, uh, I think what we will need to do, uh, <coughs> the two cubits are there, they'll be part of two different packages. Rectangle used in both of them. One is saying I am extending, other is saying I am having it, okay, as a member. So what should be done to the rectangle? Uh, has to be available outside the package, right? Rectangle will have to be available outside the package. Okay. So here is rectangle.java. Okay. It is geometry.shapes. Okay. So we should make it public. Okay, fine. Declare our class as public. What are about the member like length and width? What do we want to do here? Variables, we should declare them as private. Okay, so let's make this thing private. Okay, okay, let's keep that also. Anyway, uh, what about the variable here? Fine. Static variable also. Why should someone be able to access the count? The count is only updated from the, fine. The count is going to be updated only from the constructor, right? Okay. Static method, method. Okay, anyone wants to see the count? Fine, wants to know the value of the count. So, getting the value of count, okay, let that be a public operation. Oh, static block, no, we can't say anything like public or anything to this. What about the static method? Oh, we have a method called test static. I don't know what it's for. Uh, we were doing something earlier. Okay, anyway. Uh, method is there, I am just making it public. Here, I think it is not doing anything, right? We may as well have removed it. Okay. The block here, initializer block, right? it cannot have an access specifier. Oh, here is the constructor. Now, do we want to allow creation of the object from outside the package? Okay. Fine. We would like to allow it outside the package and we would like to make it public. At this moment, yes, we are making it public. Okay. But you may come across classes where constructor may even be <coughs> private. Okay. So don't take it as a rule. The normal thing would be that methods would be public, variables are private, and Constructors initially, yes, as you initially do something, yes, it would be normally be public. But in some cases, right, there are certain different type of patterns where uh, you may like to keep it even private also. 
fine sometimes default sometimes private so for constructor fine don't apply that rule okay fine don't take it as a rule that all constructors should be public Right. So, our initial part, yes, we are keeping it as public. Uh, what was this method to return the length? Oh, you want to know the length? Since it is only reading the value, we can make it public. Okay. Let us make this also public. And area method, fine. Okay. So, anyone will be allowed to find the area. Okay, changing the dimensions, maybe do you want to allow change in the dimensions for the rectangle class? For everyone, you want to keep it only available within the package, something which is known to me, and maybe, fine. So, you may decide to keep it <coughs> even someone may like to keep it private also. Yeah. Or, okay, let us make it public. Anyway. At this moment, let us make it public. But yes, you can decide. Yes, I do not want the change in the dimensions. And so, dimensions then becomes usable only as part of the class itself. So, maybe we have used it in the constructor and no other place, right? We have used it only in the constructor and therefore, yes, you may even say, okay, I want to keep set dimensions private. So, no one actually changes the state of the object once it has been created. Once a rectangle is created with a specific length, but you do not want to allow changes to it. Fine, then you could have made it private also. Okay. It is being used from a constructor. So, fine. We will keep it. Okay. Anyway, so we are currently, yes, we are just going ahead with making it public. Oh, we have two string method as being public. Ah, what about this class? The class called test rectangle. Okay. We want it public. This is not member of a class. This is member of a Class test rectangle is member of a package. Which package? Oh, we have declared it at top. Geometry dot shapes. Oh, do we want to keep it as, as member of this package? Or should it be on a separate package called test? We may have a separate package called test where it will be. <coughs> so, this class we may shift to another place. Okay. The file, we want to keep it public. Yes, then we can keep it in a file by the name testrectangle.java. Okay, I will cut it from here. Okay, and take it in a new file. Okay. Fine. So, this is the entire thing which we have, but here we are making it package. Test. Okay. Let us have a package test where we will have the class called test rectangle. We will have package test with the class called test keyword. Okay. So, test keyword, test rectangle, oh, we will make them as, and even the test account, oh, we will make keep a separate package where we will have all the classes for the, which contain the main method. Okay. So, yeah, now, yeah, you want to make it public? Yes, we can make this class as public. And we will save it as test rectangle dot java okay and then we'll have to scrutinize this code here okay oh there's a lot of changes which will come in this code yeah so we want to save it where here only oh we have the test rectangle dot java okay Fine. So, we have separated it out and the earlier class which was 
rectangle, yeah, we need to save this also. Okay, we'll save this. So this okay, let's see whether this code rectangle.java compiles or not. And rectangle.java should be compiling, right? Okay, so we have these files. When we are currently concentrating on rectangle and the test rectangle. Okay. So Java C minus D dot dot backslash win. We got rectangle dot Java to be compiled. And yeah, it compiles. Okay. What do you think will happen if I say let me compile? Test rectangle dot java. Shall we compile or shall we just go through the class definition and see if we can find some problems quickly or else? And let's go back and first let's have a first look at the class now since it has become part of a separate package. It's not in the same package as the rectangle class, but we are going to be using the rectangle class here, right? Okay. <coughs> okay. okay, so this rectangle. Okay, it's a public class. Yeah. Now here it says rectangle. Do we have anything called rectangle now? Do we have anything called rectangle available now? What is it? It is called. What is the name? We don't have anything called rectangle. We have got something <coughs> called geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. It's not rectangle. The name has changed to geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. Okay. Fine. Same thing. Oh, here again, this constructor says new rectangle. Oh, there's no rectangle. It's geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. Right? Another place. Let's see this. R1 dot length here. R1 equals to new rectangle. Yeah, the constructor, oh, uh, this anyway will have to be updated, geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. Constructor is public and therefore new should be fine with me. Okay, R1 dot set dimensions, yeah, we have kept it public. Uh, oh, this one. What is this doing? R1 dot length. That should be a error length is private okay set dimensions is a public method uh, here uh, what about this one that should be working because the method is public okay uh, this one that won't work we should be using the method Okay, fine. Anyway, so we realize there are some problems, but let's see what the compiler says. Okay. Okay, yeah, we were aware that yes, there, there are some problems. And have we been able to identify all? Oh, I cannot find rectangle. Oh. There's no rectangle, we understand that now. It is geometry dot shapes of rectangle. And so other place is the constructor where we were calling the constructor. That other place is the count. There was that R1 dot length also, I think, somewhere. Okay, that should all be errors. Anyway, so whatever error this is giving us, let's just fix only those. Okay. So it says we have errors in line number six, line number nine. 
okay so line 6 is here okay line number 9 Which one? Nineteen. Okay. Okay. Here, I think what we need to do is we need to call the method, right? Right. Variable is not public. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we fix those many whatever it has mentioned. Let's try again. Oh, still five errors. Uh, oh, I think what we are compiling is separate thing. Is different from what we have. Test rectangle dot Java. Okay. And this is what. Ah, package geometry dot shapes ah, does not exist. Yeah, it thinks the geometry dot shapes dot rectangle doesn't exist. It is trying to look for geometry dot shapes dot rectangle, but where is it looking for that? When it comes across okay, geometry dot shapes dot rectangle, it is now thinking now see what the compiler is looking for. It is looking for a folder called geometry containing the folder called shapes containing the rectangle dot java file so one option is we move our rectangle java file there another option is still there and let's try the other option okay when i compile this i'll also say okay we have this rectangle dot java also you are dependent on this so I have the rectangle java definition this file please compile both of them together okay let's see what happens now oh we have one error less oh, we didn't change that new rectangle oh that's for r2 okay but now you can see that error has gone oh it has now come to length okay when there's another error for oh that place again we forgot geometry dot shape dot Okay, so we have line 11, 19, <coughs> 20, and 21. Okay. That's what I missed on. Yeah, so 11, yes, it didn't get error earlier. So we can change this. Okay. What was the next one? 19. Mm -hmm. Or in between, yeah. Uh, and it's all about geometry dot shapes being not present. Yeah. Okay, so we are making it everywhere. Wherever we have used rectangle, we are saying it is geometry dot shapes. Okay, let's compile it. Ah, new rectangle R2, 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 R2. So this was line 20 again. Okay. okay. And it's compiling. How will I run this? Minus CP dot dot backslash bin yeah no yeah test rectangle or rectangle it is test or test rectangle it's not no longer test rectangle it is test or test rectangle and there it runs There's no test 
rectangle now. It is test dot test rectangle. Then clear? Okay. See, while compiling, what we had to do was give the dependent Java file here. The other option was we could have put it in a folder from where it could have been located. See, each time we were compiling cuboid, it was always compiling the rectangle also. Because we had in cuboid, we have reference to rectangle. Okay, therefore it would compile the other thing also. It would look for the other class also. Because uh, if you are dependent on rectangle and you have been using things from rectangle, it has to know that whatever your, your usage is correct or not. For that, it will also need to have the class definition for cuboid, uh, rectangle. So while compiling cuboid or something which is dependent on rectangle, in this case it is a test rectangle, it is also requiring the fine, other things. Okay, now one thing we have done is in this Java file, okay, we have used geometry.shapes.rectangle multiple times, right? Okay, you could have done one thing here. There is a statement called import declaration. So you could have done an import declaration giving this name. When you make an import declaration, what happens? Yeah, what is what do you understand by import? It's just uh, import from there. Import means what? The meaning of import? Fetch the data higher. Nothing like fetching or anything. See, this is something, it's not something which is for runtime anyway. This is for the compiler. It's an instruction to the compiler in this Java file. If you come across rectangle anywhere, okay, if you come across this rectangle thing, Please replace it with this. I have written rectangle instead of geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. It's simply a substitution to be made by the compiler. It's a declaration of a substitution. Compiler needs to substitute all rectangle declaration anywhere you have used the type simply as rectangle to be considered as geometry dot shapes dot rectangle. There's nothing like importing from some other place or something like that. Okay, it's not an action for runtime. It's a compile time action. It's just instructing the compiler. In this Java file, I have only used rectangle instead of writing the whole name. Okay, let's check this. So now, yes, now I can do like this, yes. If I don't use the full names, oh, there's so many places we have to do it. Okay. This is still going to work. Or maybe if even if I have written the full name, there's no problem. <coughs> See, import is not a mandatory thing to use rectangle here. And that's the first thing we did. Oh, it's not rectangle anyway. To use geometry dot shapes dot rectangle, I don't need the import. Okay. If I use import, I'm saved from some keys. Right? I don't have to type so much. Okay. It's not about making it available, right? Okay. It's not that it's making the class available. Import is not doing that job. Availability is decided by the access specifier. Okay, it's going to be usable or not here. That's dependent on the access specifier. Import has no role in that. Import is simple substitution for the compiler. And a simple substitution rule for the compiler. Okay.
Right. We can compile again and we can run also. Okay, so it's, and it's working fine. Okay. okay, we'll see how exactly the compiler is making use of import. Okay, uh, I'll just ask a question. I think that should be able to clarify what I and what we are trying to understand here. Okay. This is about import. Now I am talking about import declaration. Fine. We saw what is the meaning of package declaration. It is nothing but a prefix for the types defined in a Java file. And what is the import? A substitution. How the substitution works? Okay. Now, uh, Okay, the question here is something like this. Yeah. Oh, we haven't yet done this exercise. We have just started with whatever we have done here. Uh, you will have to do it for the account class. Okay, account test account. Okay. Uh, yeah. So maybe we have a class like this. There's a. Okay. Uh, so let's assume a file which has a package declaration okay so we have some package one we have a class called class one okay. right. so that's one java file uh, and maybe as part of the same package i've also got class called class 2 or okay in the same package I declare a class called string okay so we have package 1 having two classes class 1 and class string okay if I compile what are the types created? If I compile this, what will be created? pkg1 dot class one and pkg1 dot string. Okay, it's fine to have a class called string for your own thing. Okay, you can always have that, right? Okay, oh, uh, now let me write like this. Suppose I write public static void main string array and I put like this system dot out dot print ln yeah okay suppose something like this happens so my question is what about compiling this will this compile or not First question, is this going to compile or not? Okay, it's going to compile. Okay, when I give the command pkg1 dot class 1, what do you expect? As we are executing, we say it is going to compile, right? Now, after compiling, if I say, let me run this application, what do you think happens? You saw the message when we didn't have a main method. What was the message? It said, oh, we need a public static void main method, right? With the parameter of type string array. That message will come. You will get that message here. The reason here is, okay, you have not done an import. Anyway, the question of import even does not arise here. Even if you put some kind of an import, okay, here, when you have used string, the substitution of string will be 
it will be substituted as pkg1 dot string. My current packet declaration says pkg1. Any symbol I come across, it's not only string, anywhere else, any symbol, the compiler is working in this manner. Okay, I'm coming across some data type. Okay, here is a type name. It doesn't have a prefix, there's no qualifier to it. Therefore, how do I make a substitution for that? I think this must be in my own package. That's why, that's why you have not written it. So it's thinking the string is part of my own package. That's why you have not written. And I find it is there. Oh, then it is pkg1.string. If this string was not declared, we don't have in pkg1, we don't have a string class. Okay, then what will it do? It would have compiled, but how is it going about the things? So first thing in any symbol is, is it part of the package? Let me try to use this as a prefix. If I don't find, okay, I will look at some import. Maybe, is there any import? Okay. And if this happens to be valid, it's not part of PKG1, but if this happens to be valid, it will substitute with this. If it can load a class called XYZ dot string, your declaration of string is substituted with this. But substitution would start, the import is taken into consideration, provided that is something, whatever you are using is something which is not available in your current package. First preference is pkg1.string. See, in this current case, this will still not work. You are saying, I want strings to be substituted with xyz dot thing. It won't do that. It will still be substituted as pkg1 dot string. <clears throat> You know the string which we use is part of a package which we have been using so far, which is from the Java library. All things in Java library are some part of some or the other package. Okay. Yes, you have this package. This is basically, if you want this to work, it will have to be written as java.lang.string. We don't have string. In Java, there is nothing called string. It is actually java.lang.string. Okay. okay. We'll look at that substitution rule which is available. Uh, but anyway, we'll continue this tomorrow, right? Okay. So uh, it's uh, in Java dot lang dot string, right? That's if you put this, yes, that's going to work. Everywhere we were using only string, but it is actually getting substituted by the compiler to java.lang.string and how that substitution is happening and we will be looking at that. So, we will continue tomorrow, okay. And, and then, yes, then we will take up the exercise of organizing everything into a packages. So, tomorrow, yes, we will have that, right. So, tomorrow, yes, we will do the, some exercise also, right. Okay. But uh, package and other thing was access specifiers. Okay, that should be clear. Okay, so tomorrow, yes, we'll see that, and we'll have our code also updated to use all the access specifiers. We have done it only for the rectangle currently. Okay, but cuboid also has to work. Okay. Okay. Fine.